Hello, and welcome to the Forte Design Systems training series, a playlist of instructional videos to get you up to speed quickly creating designs in Synthesizer. Today we're going to introduce you to System C, the high-level coding standard for system-level design. Now we'll take it slow in the beginning, but before we start, let's go through a few things. First, we'll assume that you have some knowledge about hardware design and have used a hardware description language like Verilog. If you have a background in modeling or algorithm development, better yet, that means you probably know C pretty well. But if you're purely a hardware designer and don't know C, don't worry. We'll show you what you need to know along the way. And one more thing you should know. You'll note I didn't use the word language when defining System C. And that's because System C isn't a language at all. It's actually a library of C++ classes that are written to emulate the behavior of hardware in a way regular C can't. These classes understand concurrency, bit accuracy, and they can advance time sequentially in a simulation. So let's get right to it. Any design you create is going to start with a module that has a name. Let's see what just this much looks like in System C. Well, first you're going to need to include the actual System C libraries. You do this in C with the pound include statement, which here includes the systemc.h header file. That's the top level file in System C and it means that our module is going to inherit all the operators, functions, and other constructs available in System C. Next, we'll learn our first System C keyword, SC underscore module. Just insert the name of your module in the parenthesis next to it, and everything between the open and close braces will become a real System C module. Once you have a module, you'll probably want some input ports. You can declare an input port with the SC underscore in class, followed by the name of the port and a semicolon. Output ports? Well, likewise, those are declared with the SC underscore out class. The SCN and SC out port classes are what are called templates, and what that means is you can pass arguments through these greater than less than brackets to define parameters inside the class. The argument for SCN and SC out ports is their data type, like integer or fixed point. We'll get into data types later, but for now, just see that we're using this DT macro as a placeholder for the port data types. Now there's one more quick thing to show you when building an SC module, and that's a System C constructor. It's the SC underscore CTOR keyword, and it goes inside the module like this. Just like SC module, it needs a name inside of parentheses, and the body is enclosed in braces, and it must by rule have the same name as the module. Now to explain what a constructor is, it is a concept from C++, but to put it simply, just think of it as a foundational building block for the module. It's run just once when the module is instantiated for simulation, and you'll see later it's where you can do things like specify if your design changes on the rising or falling edge of the clock, or designate internal signals to be traced in a simulation waveform. So now that we have a module with some ports, let's make it do something. We'll make it easy. We'll just read the A and B input ports and perform a simple AND operation on them, then write the result to output port F. First, let's learn how System C deals with the reading and writing of ports. The SC import class has a function called read to read values from it, and the SC out port class has a function called write to write values to it. So for example, if you had an input port INP and wanted to assign its value to a local variable X, you would write the expression X equals INP dot read. Conversely, if you had a local variable called val and wanted to write its value to an output port out P, you would write out p dot write with val as the argument. So if we go back to our coding example, we can add a member function to our module that does our anding operation. We'll call it func, and we declare it by saying void func. This void is a C keyword and means that the function doesn't return any value, and the empty parentheses mean that func doesn't have any arguments. Then after the open brace, we write the behavioral expression of func, f dot write means we're going to write a value to output port F, and the value is what was read on input port A anded with what was read on input port B, then a close brace to complete the function definition. Now we're almost done, but to make this a complete System C module, there's one last and very important topic we need to cover, and that's threads. A thread in System C is a function or other block of code that is made to act like a hardware process. There can be multiple threads in NSC module, and each of them will run concurrently in parallel. This is something C can't do. It can only run its code in sequence. Just like hardware, a thread can be made sensitive to changes in signals, clock edges, or just fixed amounts of time. But the most unique thing about threads is they are not called by the user. They are always active based on the way you define them in a System C constructor. 
Now System C has three types of threads. They are SC methods, SC threads, and SCC threads, and we'll take a closer look at those now. SC methods are threads that execute exactly once in their entirety every time they're triggered by a sensitive event. They run continuously, and they're directly analogous to a Verilog always block. SC methods are supported for synthesis and are useful for combinational logic or small sequential logic like counters that can be done at one clock cycle. Something you won't use very much of are SC threads. SC threads are threads that execute just once and only once at the beginning of a simulation and then are suspended when done. If you want them to execute continuously, you can put an infinite loop in them like a while loop that does something at a fixed time rate, sort of like a Verilog initial block. However, SC threads are not synthesizable, but they are useful in test benches, so we'll see them later in videos where we get into verification. Finally, SCC threads. The C means clocked. SCC threads run continuously and can only be sensitive to a clock edge. They're synthesizable, and they are different from SC methods in that they can take one or more clock cycles to execute. This is what makes them most useful for high-level design because abstract design styles like FUR filters and H.264 algorithms could take hundreds of clock cycles to execute. You're going to use SCC threads in almost every design you build in Synthesizer. So, let's come back to our coding example. We have an ANDing function here, just a simple piece of combinational logic, so from what we've learned about threads, the SC method thread type is the best one to use. So to turn our function into an SC method, we go to the System C constructor and add the line SC method with the name of our behavioral function as the argument. This now designates func will be an SC method thread. Next, we want to specify the sensitivity for this SC method. Well, since A and B are the input signals to our function, we want the SC method to execute whenever those signals change value. So on the line directly after SC method, we add a line using the keyword sensitive followed by the list of sensitive signals separated by left shifts. In system C, the left shift operator has been overloaded to represent a list of sensitive signals or events. Now, let's make this design a little more interesting. What if we wanted this ANDing function to become sequential? In other words, sensitive to a rising clock edge. Well, that means we have a new input port for a clock, and in our code we would just add that port using the SCN port class we learned about earlier. Now, a clock is always just a one-bit width signal, so you would use the C bool data type like this to specify that it's just a single wire. Now, down in the System C constructor, we have to make a slight change. In a sequential SC method, we no longer change on A or B. Instead, we want to change on the rising edge of the clock. So the sensitive statement changes to a single event, clock.pause. The System C clock class has this pause member function to indicate a rising edge of the clock input. Likewise, if we wanted this design to be negative edge sensitive, our sensitivity event would become clock.neg. So now we have one last loose end to tie up. Remember that the data types of the inputs and outputs for this design are still undefined. There are a number of data types available in System C, but for now I'm just going to show you the one you will likely use in the majority of your designs, integers. System C has bit accurate versions of the integer data type that have a fixed width and allow bit select and part select operations. This is different than the generic int data type available in C. You can use int in your design and it will run in synthesizer, but it will always have the width of your machine's processor, usually 32 bits. System C integer data types come in two flavors, signed and unsigned. Unsigned integers can be declared using the SCUint templated class, and signed integers use the SCint class. So just for the detail needed in our example, the SCUint class has one argument, n, which is the bit width. So for example, you could declare an unsigned integer x of width 3, and in this table you see the possible values that can be described with x. For the SCINT class, the most significant bit is a signed bit. So instead of going from 0 to 7, a 3-bit signed integer can describe the values negative 4 to positive 3, like you see here. So back in our design, I'm going to replace the DT data type placeholders with real system C data types. If I just want a 1-bit unsigned integer data type passing through the ports, I just replace it with SCUINT1, like this. Ports A, B, and F are all now 1-bit wide, and unsigned. So there you go. In 10 minutes you've learned enough System C to create a basic design. But just for completeness, let's review what we've seen. 
We learned how to describe a design as a system C module using SC underscore module. We added input and output ports to it using the SC in and SC out port classes. We wrote a function describing the behavior of our design and how to read and write the ports using dot read and dot write. We saw that the module needed a system C constructor and that's where we would designate a function to be a thread. We learned about the different kinds of threads, SC methods, SC threads, and SCC threads. We made a thread sensitive to signals or clock edges using the sensitive keyword with the left shift operator and learned about the dot pause and dot neg clock edge functions. And we were introduced to system C integer data types, SCUint for unsigned and SCint for signed. We hope you enjoyed this introduction to System C from Forte Design Systems. Thanks and join us next time for more System C high-level design features.